the question that this simulation is going to help us answer is how do seismograph stations help determine an earthquake's epicenter? So remember the epicenter is where the earthquake or originated from. So if we look at this as a map of the United States and each of these points on here is a different seismograph station. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using that method you read about of you determining the epicenter of an earthquake using three different seismograph readouts and graphing the distance um, from the earthquake to the seismograph for each of these points. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to pick a spot. I'm just going to start at A. So if we look at A, this is our seismograph readout. We can see that the P wave arrived here at 4 hours and 14 minutes and that our S wave arrived here at 4 hours, 16 minutes and 15 seconds. So we're looking at the difference in time between the S wave arrival and the P wave arrival in order to figure out how far away the earthquake is. So these, the P wave arrives first because it travels faster. So we take this time, this time difference of two minutes and 15 seconds, because I took four minutes and 16, or four hours, 16 minutes, 15 seconds, minus four hours and 14 minutes. This is our distance graph. We know how fast these waves travel so that we can say, well, if the time difference is 2 minutes and 15 seconds, remember that's a quarter of this mark here. You guys did an, um, a practice with this. So I know that here would be 2 and a half minutes, so this is 2 and a quarter minutes. I go over on this graph, and that tells me, I hit the line here, go down, that this um, seismograph was 1,000 kilometers from the epicenter. So once you know how far away you are, remember A, I would take this compass over here and I can say, I can move it to the distance that I calculated, which was a thousand kilometers, and then I click draw circle. So this circle, anywhere on this circle could be where our earthquake came from. We need to use multiple points because look, there's a ton of different places here that the earthquake could come from. So by calculating the distance from two others, we're going to find one single point where all of the lines overlap, and that's where our earthquake came from. So we can do another example. We're going to look at E. So we can see we're watching, watching. Okay, our P wave arrived, and then our S wave. So our P wave came at 4 hours, 18 minutes, and 20 seconds. Our S wave came at 4 hours, 23 minutes, 35 seconds. So the difference between these, we're really just looking at the 2335 minus 1820. So that's 15 seconds and 5 minutes. So the difference between these two is 5 minutes and 15 seconds. You might want to write it out on a piece of scratch paper. So then I look at my distance graph, 5 minutes and 15 seconds. I go over here and that tells me that we are 3,500 kilometers from the epicenter of the earthquake because I'm between the 3,000 and the 4,000. So I exit out of here, go over to my compass, and 3,500 kilometers, and I can draw my circle. So now I'm looking at these circles overlap in two different places. So these are now the only two places that your earthquake could have come from. And so what you're going to do is you're going to pick a different spot. And then once you have a third circle and a third distance from one of these points, there's only going to be one spot that all three of those circles overlap. And that is where your earthquake came from. So as you do this activity, make sure you're being really careful about getting the correct distances between, or sorry, the correct difference in time between um, the P wave arrival and S wave arrival so that you get the right distance using the distance graph. And then here's an example of those calculations. So there's some more help over here. There's lots of helpful instructions over here. And I want you guys to be using the procedure that's written as well as this video to help you figure out how to do the lab. If you have any questions, email your teacher. We're happy to help.